Good afternoon all and this is our first tutorial for the German 1000 as requested. I've made this specifically for beginners and this is a very simple point-to-point -point GPS tutorial for the German 1000. Now to work on all aircraft, uh, that's the way I've designed the tutorial today. To the left side we have the primary flight display, the PFD. To the right we have the multifunctional display, the MFD. Now both of them you usually have together in the 172 etc. Now it does have an extra primary flight display for the co-pilot. And down below it has an extra little few buttons but we don't need to worry about those. This is a general GPS tutorial. Now this is where we're looking. This is the important part. If you don't see what you see here hit the CDI button as I showed you. Okay let's get a bit of paper out and just have a look at some real basics here okay. Now we're going to go from point A to point B using the GPS on the Garmin 1000. Okay. Now in a circle we have 360 degrees. North, east, south and west. North is 360, east is 090, south is 180 degrees and west is 270 degrees. And, and remember if you take a right turn you increase your heading, if you take a left turn you decrease your heading. Now I put a little airplane down here. We want to go from A to B. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a little arrow telling us where to go? And that's exactly what we're going to have. Now let's say as we're flying to B, we're a little bit to the right of track. That's the track over the ground. See that bar I've drawn there? That's telling us to turn left. And that bar will continue to come inwards to the whole line until it's formed one single line arrow. Now you'll see this shortly. And we can go straight to B. Now let's say if we're to the left of our track over the ground. That line will say turn right. And as we continue to intercept that line, the chorus bar, if you like, will start coming in until we've got a single line, like so. And we get to B. Right, okay, so we're gonna see this shortly, but how do we know where we're going? And how do we, how do we know what is the code for the airfield we're at? Well, there's a thing called an ICAO code. Most of you know that already, probably. And we're going from Waterford, which is, which is Echo India Whiskey Foxtrot, E-I-W-F. Now, this sky vector is free, and I'm going to put a link down below. See here, I've gone to Haverford West, across the RC, E-G-F-E, Echo Golf Foxtrot Echo. Let's plug all this into the GPS. Now, we're looking at the multifunctional display, the MFD, and here we're going to look, and we're going to press Flight Plan, F. PL. Now the minute you press that you'll see the box is shown. Now this little knob here is important. The outside large knob is for moving the cursor. Right? That moves the cursor up and down. It's a bit fiddly. Okay, you see there I'm moving the outside knob. The inside smaller knob, if you like, I know you're all laughing. Right? We'll change that letter. And the minute you switch that inside knob, you see there? Now what I want to put in here is the Arceo identifier for Haverford West. So it's a little bit awkward, but try it a few times and you'll get it. Now, if you stuff it up, you can move the cursor to your waypoint and uh, using clear and enter, you can remove it and add it again. I'll show you those buttons now shortly. It's a little bit fiddly, I know, but you'll get used to it. So you want to put an EGFE there. And when you've done that, you confirm it's Haverford West. You see where the mouse is? You press enter, enter to accept. You press it twice. Now, the minute you press that, bang. It brings you to Haverford West, EGFG. Okay, so with the MFS button, I'm moving the larger portion of the button and it'll move the cursor. See the way when I go from waypoint to waypoint, the map will display it. Also, you can use the range button. Zoom in and zoom out so you can see your entire flight plan. Now, if you stuff it up, you can use the clear and enter button to delete the waypoint, okay? Now, let's activate the waypoint. Again, see where the mouse is? I'm going to select EGFG, that waypoint for Haverford West. I want to select that, okay? So I'm moving the inner, sorry, the outer, the outer button. I know it's messy. The outer button, I'm highlighting it, and I simply press menu, not enter, menu. Click on menu, and it'll ask you to activate leg. You hit enter again, and it act, and you'll see it changes color to magenta. See that? Now that part of your trip is active. You may have to try this a few times. I'm pretty sure of that. It just takes a little bit of practice. Okay, let's play with the uh, the uh, altitude and the heading bugs just for the moment, very quickly. See here, I'm on the altitude button there. Now, again, there's a bigger inner knob and a smaller outer knob, if that makes sense to you. The bigger inner knob changes thousands of feet. The smaller one, hundreds of feet. So you can fiddle with those. And I'm just setting it to 5,000 feet here, just to have a bug for my altitude so I know to level off. You'll see as we go. 
Also, the heading book, if I press it in, it gives me my current heading. It just highlights where my current uh, heading of my aircraft is pointing. So that's all there is to it. And up the top there, you can see the GPS has programmed in Waterford to have for West, and it's 81.1 miles. And our track over the ground is 107 degrees, 107 degrees. Let's fly. We're going to quickly take off and turn on to track, and you're going to see how this works. So I'm going to add some power, and we're going to barrel down the runway. Now, this aircraft bombs along very, very quickly. So it's very interesting to fly when uh, manually when you're flying along. Next time we'll do the autopilot if these videos are popular, we'll do an autopilot tutorial. So I'm just flying this manually for the moment. Up we go. And you can hear the sounds there, it's great. Uh, because the gear's down, up comes the gear. And you can hear the wheels spinning. I should top the brakes. So it's a very good realistic simulation of this aircraft. In any case, now look at the magenta bar. We need to turn to the left here, okay? We're turning left, there's our arrow as I drew before. Our course is to be 107 degrees. And there's a little map to give you some idea of where you are in space. So we're just continuing to turn. And you can see that bar down below is turning more to the left. Now I'm going to continue my turn. Now if I straighten out at 107 degrees, you can see it there in magenta. That's not good enough because we're not going to intercept that line, that imaginary line we drew. See 107 there? So I'm just playing with the heading bug there. So I'm going to set my heading bug to more than 107 because I want to intercept that imaginary line. There we go. It's a bit tricky when you're flying the sim and doing all this. I'm just putting some more icing on. So we're just turning to the left here a little bit more because I'm playing with the mouse. It's kind of tricky on the computer. So now I should really have straightened up a bit earlier, but look, we take our heading. Now you'll see the course bar coming in. You see it slowly moving in. So we're intercepting that line. The course bar is slowly moving in. Now we should have turned already, but that's okay. I just want to do it this way to show you. So we're going to turn right now to intercept that line of 107 and to be right on course. Now we're a little bit late. I'm not going to increase the bank. So now we'll turn past 107, more to the right, remember? Turning to the right increases your heading, turning to the left decreases your heading. Now, hopefully, I'm not over explaining this. I think it's kind of self explanatory at this point. So I'm just speeding it up a little bit there. And while you're flying manually, you just want to have your heading bug set to the way you want it. Now I can see the wind here and whatnot. But as you can see, uh, it's we're fine, we're on track and we're on course. So uh, do let me know in the comments if this helps. Uh, this is for beginners, remember. I know it'll get more complex as we go along. We're going to do lots of short, quick little videos and then we'll do a big, long flight one day. So do let me know what you think in the comments, especially if there's something you don't like, because I need to improve these tutorials. And it's all about you. It's all about the person who wants to learn about the German 1000 on X-Plane 11. So thanks for coming in, as always, for watching. And by the way, thanks a million for all the lovely comments people have been sending. It's really great. And we'll see you again this week on the Reaction Review. And... Uh, Great. See you then.